in this video we are going to discuss about types of operating systems we know what is operating system operating system is an interface between user of the computer and computer hardware without installing operating system we can't perform anything in the computer uh, let us see about types of operating system uh, we have uh, mainly seven types of operating systems are there batch system multi programming system multitasking or time shared system uh, next one multi processor system distributed system real time systems these are the important operating systems let us see all these operating systems one by one the first one is batch systems the first one is batch systems so what is a batch batch means a collection of jobs uh, in this type of operating system what will happen is the user uses uh, punch cards so in the olden days uh, uh, we uses batch systems punch cards uh, so here uh, the user provides the program or job information in the form of the punch card okay and after after uh, submitting the after writing the corresponding program or uh, job details in the punch card all the jobs will be submitted to the computer operator computer operator here the problem with this approach is that uh, the user cannot interact with computer directly in between user and computer we have computer operator is there okay so here first what the user will do the user will provide the corresponding program information in punch cards so once uh, that information is uh, written once that program code is written then uh, all the jobs will be submitted to the computer operator let us assume that user wants to execute 10 jobs or 10 programs so in the form of punch card all that information will be supplied to the computer operator okay computer operator okay let us assume that user wants to execute nine job 10 jobs okay so here all this information all the program information will be available in the form of the punch card okay in punch card that information will be available okay and after that uh, what the computer operator will do is computer operator will group all these jobs into batches according to the requirement okay let us assume that uh, the first five jobs are executed using COBOL programming language so the first five jobs will be grouped into a batch called B1 let us assume that the next five jobs are implemented using Fortran language Fortran language so the computer operator will group all these jobs into a batch called B1 so first computer operator will provides B1 jobs information to the computer now it is the responsibility of the computer to execute B1 jobs okay and after producing the output the computer operator will supplies batch 2 information to the uh, corresponding computer okay so computer will executes and uh, produces the uh, given and produces the output to the user but the major problem with this approach is that uh, let us assume that uh, uh, cpu is executing b2 jobs and uh, assumes that all these jobs are waiting for some io operations during io operation cpu will sit as idle but during that time it is not possible to allocate operating system to some other batch so when operating system uh, allocate cpu to some other batch only after completing execution of these batches then only operating system uh, allocates uh, uh, cpu to some other batch okay so this is the problem here most of the time cpu will sit as id okay while doing the io operations we can overcome this problem with the help of uh, second type of system that is multi programmer system so the second type of system is multi programmer system multi programmer system the name itself specifies the meaning so what is multi programming multi programming means placing multiple programs multi programmer system means uh, we can place multiple programs in the main memory 
and we can execute all the programs simultaneously. So that is about uh, what is multi-programming, keeping more number of programs in the main memory and executing all those programs simultaneously. The major advantage of this approach is uh, CPU utilization. CPU utilization. We can utilize the CPU in effective manner if we use multi-programming operating system. Let us assume that uh, in main memory, we have uh, three processes are there. So P1, P2, P3, three programs are there. Let us assume that operating system allocates CPU to process P1. So now CPU is executing P1. Uh, and, uh, and after some time, uh, assumes that P1 needs some IO operation. Program 1 needs some IO operation. So during IO operation, there is no need of CPU. CPU will sit as ideal. So what the CPU will do is, CPU control will be shifted to second program now. So now CPU starts executing process P2, okay. Uh, let us assume that P2 also requires some IO operation. So operating system allocates CPU to some other process. So this is the advantage here. While one process is waiting for some IO operation, operating system allocates CPU to some other process. So likewise, uh, we can utilize the efficiency of the CPU in effective manner with the help of the multi-programming system. Now let us see the third type of system that is time sharing system. So the third type of operating system is time shared system or time sharing systems. So time shared system or this can also be called as a multitasking system, multitasking. So here, so time sharing means it is an extension to the multi-programming system. So here also main memory uh, may contain uh, multiple programs and all those programs are to be executed simultaneously. Time sharing, the name itself specifies the meaning. CPU allocates a time to all the processes. Let us assume that three processes are there in the main memory. So P3, P2, P1, three processes are there in the main memory. Let for executing P3, uh, it requires uh, 4 milliseconds for executing P2 it requires uh, 2 milliseconds of CPU for executing P1 uh, it requires uh, let us assume that 2 milliseconds of the CPU okay uh, here assumes that uh, uh, operating system allocated 2 milliseconds to all the processes operating system allocated 2 milliseconds to all these processes so CPU can allocate each process only for 2 milliseconds only so assumes that first CPU starts executing process P3. So here what is the time here? 4 milliseconds. But CPU can execute only up to 2 milliseconds only. So P3 executes 2 milliseconds. So remaining time is 2 milliseconds. So the remaining, uh, so that process will be appended to the end of the list, okay? Beginning of the list, okay? So what is the remaining time? 2 milliseconds. So now CPU executes P2. So P2 requires only 2 milliseconds. So there is no problem. So CPU completes the execution of the P2. Next P1 also requires 2 milliseconds. So CPU also completes 2 milliseconds. Next to CPU completes P3, 2 milliseconds of the P3. So now we can conclude that uh, all the processes completed their execution. So this is about time sharing system. So a time will be shared among all the processes that are in the system. Uh, now let us see the next one that is multiprocessor system multiprocessor system so multiprocessor system the name itself specifies the meaning instead of single processor multiple processors are connected to the same computer so here we have a single computer let us assume that three processors are connected to the corresponding computer so we have a single computer with three processors this is p1 processor p2 processor p3 processor and assumes that uh, we need to execute three processes. We need to execute three programs. So P1, P2, P3. So we need to execute uh, these three processes. Uh, now, wh now what will happen? P1 will execute. Processor 1 will execute P1 program. Processor P2 executes P2. Processor P3 executes P3 program. So all these three programs uh, will be executed concurrently. So what will happen? It increases the output. So there are three advantages are there. The first advantage of multiprocessor is it increases the throughput. So throughput means output will be increases. In less span of time, we will get the output. 
whereas if you have only one CPU, then that CPU has to execute all these three processes concurrently. Instead of that here, we have three processes are there, so that in less span of time, uh, we can get the output. So increases the throughput. And the second advantage is economy. It is very, very cheaper process. Why? Because uh, three processes are attached to the single computer only. Here we are not using three different, three separate computers. Instead of that, we are using only a single computer and three processes are attached to that computer. So it is very, very cheaper, okay, when compared with the three computers with the three processors, okay. And one more uh, advantage is reliability. Suppose uh, due to some problem, if one of the processor fail, then there is no problem. The remaining processor will come, uh, the remaining two, pro one of the, one of these two processors will come into the picture and uh, execute the corresponding uh, uh, process, okay, reliability, okay. If one processor fail, then there is no problem. The remaining processors will execute the corresponding task. So this is about uh, multi-processor system, multi-processor system. Now let us see the next one that is distributed system, distributed system. Distributed system can also be called as network system. Distributed system, the name itself specifies the meaning. The same information will be distributed to uh, all the systems in the corresponding network. Let us assume that uh, 10 persons are working on a uh, same project. Let we have a network with 10 systems, assumes that 10 persons are working on that project. Okay. So then what will happen is that information, that problem information, that project information will be distributed to all the 10 persons. Let us assume that P1 has designed the first two modules. So those two modules code will be distributed to remaining all nine, nine systems also. Assumes that P2 designed uh, module 3 and module 4. Uh, so that information is distributed to all the systems also. Uh, due to some problem assumes that uh, the first computer and the second computer is uh, trashed, it, it is failed, then there is no problem. Why? Because those copies are already available in the remaining uh, nine computers. So there is no problem. So this is about distributed system or network system. So that same information will be distributed to remaining all the systems in the network. So due to any problem, if one or multiple systems fail, then there is no problem. Oh, why? Because that same data is replicated in all the systems also. That's, that same data is available in all the systems also. Uh, and uh, we have one more system called real-time system. Real-time operating system is mainly useful in order to implement real-time applications. Real-time applications. If you want to perform an application in a specific uh, period of time, in a specific amount of time, then we have to use real-time operating system. There are two types of real-time operating systems are there. First one is hard real-time operating system. Second one is soft real-time operating system. Hard real-time operating system means that uh, application should be executed within that uh, stipulated amount of time only. Otherwise, uh, the system will fail. Uh, the best example for the hard real-time application is if, if we take uh, uh, aeroplane driving, okay, the pilot will drive based upon the corresponding sensor, okay. If that sensor fail, then it is not possible to drive, okay. The sensor will show the route, okay. So it is not possible uh, uh, to drive the corresponding uh, flight, okay. So that is the problem. Where a soft real-time means uh, if there is any problem, then there is no problem, okay. Uh, suppose let us assume that within that stipulated time, we didn't get the output. So there is no problem. The best example is if you take uh, some weather forecasting information. So due to some problem, let us assume that the system failed. So there is no problem. Okay. So that is about uh, soft real-time system. So these are the various types of operating systems.